What is BDD or Behavior Driven Development? BDD means Behavior Driven Development. This is an agile software development process which has emerged from test-driven development. So test-driven development is the fundament and BDD builds on top of that fundament and uses, of course, some of the techniques of test-driven development. Behavior-driven development also has elements from domain-driven design in it, uh, which makes it great so that you have a the, the same language with the business. And one of the big benefits that you get out of behavior-driven development is that you have specifications which are executable. So what kind of challenge do we have and what problem do we want to solve with BDD? So when we look at the PO, the BA and the RE, they have the specification in their head. And now they are trying to move that specification into a Word document, into an Excel matrix or into a nice looking flow diagram. And then they are throwing this specification over the wall of confusion to the developer. The developer needs now to load this information back into his brain and make some sense out of it. Of course, he talks to the PO and the BA and the relationship manager, and then he starts to implement what he thinks is the right thing. He codes that, and he also writes some tests. So again, he transfers this into code. After this is in the code, then the QA comes, and the QA again looks at the application, looks at the specification, and most, in most of the cases, he is confused because it looks not the same. And that's the problem. We have a lot of transformations in this way with these three amigos. And that's our challenge we want to solve with BDD. With BDD, we are getting an executable specification. And with this specification, we are able to create directly out of the specification tests that the developer can use for his implementation. And we are getting, through this executable specification, also directly a documentation for the PO, the QA, the audit, and also for the developers. These executable specifications of BDD, they are easy to read and they can also be executed with different programming languages, with different technologies. And what is really great about that, this executable specification is written in the business language. And the result out of that is that we have a better software quality and also less bugs and we have a lot of tests which are written in this executable specification and we have a specification that is always executed with every change that we are doing in the software. To support us with behavior-driven development, there is a lot of software on the market. We have Gherkin, which is the language parser. So when we are defining this executable specification using BDD and the given when then form, then Gherkin is the language parser which will take up these special words. And then there is software um, which supports behavior-driven development. It is called Cucumber. And in the .NET area, we can use Specflow or NBehave. Um, in JavaScript, we use Cucumber.js. Uh, in Java, there is Cucumber, JVM, JBehave, JGiven, and also in Python, we have Behave. And there are, is a ton of software out there. You can click on that link and you get all of these softwares. Let's have a look how a user story looks like in BDD. 
it doesn't look very different to a normal user story. It has a story title and it has the template form of as a role I want to have that feature so that I get this benefit. But what we have is the so-called acceptance criteria, which are written in scenarios in a given when then form. So we have always a given, which is just the precondition, the current condition we are in. Then when we are doing the following action, then we want to have this result. And we have multiple of these acceptance criteria. Let's have a look at an example. Here we have the user story of a calculator where we are adding two numbers. So the user story looks like this. As a user, I want to add two numbers so that I can see what the total is. The acceptance criteria is given I have entered the number one into the calculator and I have entered the number two into the calculator. When I add these numbers, then the result should be three. So now let's have a look at this user story and implement this user story using behavior-driven development. In this case, we will use Visual Studio and we will use SpecFlow um, to enable us uh, to create this behavior-driven design uh, test cases. So for that, um, we need to um, first install this extension of SpecFlow, uh, which we can see here. I have already installed that. You need to install that to use SpecFlow in Visual Studio. After that, you are able to add a special SpecFlow project, which we can see here. And in this, you can then add these features. Um, I have already copied the acceptance criteria of the user story into here. We see here the feature calculated, the scenario, sum of two numbers, and we have here the given vendens that we have specified in our user story. As you can see, as a developer, I just need to copy what has been specified in the user story into the source code. And this is exactly this executable specification that we are having here. So you can see here now I have entered the first number and the second number. And with SpecFlow, we are able to generate now the definition for that, which I uh, will do. And with that, we are getting a new file, a C sharp file, which we can see here. And this is absolutely great now. You can see now the given uh, when then form in here in code. So the spec flow has now generated me the tests that I as a developer need to implement to fulfill um, this, uh, this feature or this uh, behavior driven dev development uh, um, solution. So uh, I will quickly build and will execute uh, my step cases in here. Um, and you can see the, 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 the test runner um, could not uh, finish because um, these, uh, these tests are, are failing because behind in here there is no implementation. So we have a failing test which we have learned in test-driven development is essential. We will always first write a failing test and then we will get it to work. And that's exactly what we are going to do now. So first of all, we need to implement um, or define a calculator. We will do that private um, calculator. Cal Calculator is new calculator. Of course, there is no calculator, uh, so I will generate quickly in a new file a calculator, which we have done now here. You can see my calculator. Back to the step. In the first step, um, we say I have entered the first number, which you can see in here. It's now a variable which I get here uh, into my calculator. So I create my calculator and say 
first number equals to p0. Of course, we would rename this p0 into something meaningful. Um, and I generate now my properly, and this property is now generated in here, and I can use it. In the second given, I have entered the second number, and again, we will have the calculator second uh, number equals p0. Of course, also here we will rename. Um, and we will generate also this second property. Now we have it in here. And then uh, we are going to the when. In the when we will add these two numbers. For that um, we will need to store the result. Oops. Uh, result equals calculator dot add. The add method is, of course, not yet defined, so we will generate this method and go in here and we now see a not implemented exception. Um, we will change that to a, a int and we will keep this not implemented exception so that you can see how this works. We have now here the result and I need to generate um, my variable. Um, yeah generate this variable. Here we have now the variable result. And what I want to do now is execute uh, these uh, tests so that we can see now, yes, exactly, the test is failing because we can see that the test method is failing because a not implemented exception has been thrown. That was exactly the intention. We have here the not implemented exception. And I will fix that. Result, oh, sorry. Return first number plus second number. Good. Um, and now we have the then step. And in the then step, we now go and say result should b p0 and again here we would fix that of course I'll rename it um, I need quickly to use fluent assertions in here and now um, this should work so let's execute And hopefully it will be green. Yes, uh, of course it is green. Um, everything is good. So we have now created our um, first, um, first BDD test. Uh, we can also click in here. We see uh, the, the test outcome. It's also quite nice. You can see in here, given I have entered the first number one into the calculator, I have entered number two. Um, when I add this number, it should be three. Absolutely great. Now let's have a look if I make an error here. Let's add here two and execute this test again. And now we have a failing test. And now look at that. Expected result should be three, but found five. And let's have a look in here when we click in here. And we see here then the result should be three, error expected result three, but found five. Absolutely great. And the cool thing is you have now a real executable specification which you also can read. That's the big benefit of using behavior-driven development. Let's quickly sum up what we have just seen. We have created a user story with a specification in it. For that, we have used behavior-driven development. The acceptance criteria were in the form of given, when, then. I, as a developer, have read this user story and I have created a test with spec flow, in my case, because I was using Visual Studio and C Sharp. Specflow has created for me 
these steps, which we can see here, for the given and the when and the then. And I have filled up these steps with implementation. And then I have executed these steps and the runner has run through the code and we got an executable specification out of that. The great thing about that is the implementation of this user story, of the specification of this user story, is now forever in our code and will every time be executed when something changes. Of course, you will say, yeah, but this is just a calculator example. Here we can see a more complicated example which we can use. Um, this is a market value calculation for financial instrument positions. Here we, we have the given an instrument with the rate 100 and the position with the quantity of 10. When these values are calculated, then the position of the market value is 1000. This is a little bit complicated example. Um, and what you also can see now is that we use the business language for it, which is absolutely great. And that enables us also to use this business language in the, um, in the code. Now, let's get a little bit more advanced. What if I have multiple input variables which I want to give into um, a, a when? When I have that, I use so-called data tables. With data tables, I can add multiple values in one step definition. You can see that in this example where we have a market uh, value calculation for a whole portfolio. In this portfolio, I have multiple positions, which you can see over there. And then we can uh, calculate the market value for all of these uh, positions which we have in there. So that's a way how you can handle multiple uh, input values. What if we want to execute one scenario multiple times with different combination of values? And this is how we are doing that. We uh, create a so-called so scenario outline and with that we are able to, uh, to create some uh, placeholder values. Like here, the instrument with rate, where we have a rate, and position with quantity, where we have the quantity as a variable. When we values are calculated, then the position market value should be market value. And then we generate these examples down here, which we also can create, for example, in an Excel, and they can get quite huge. That's how we execute multiple times with different set of values as such an example. If you want to know more about behavior-driven development and especially about the Gherkin and the syntax behind it and what options you have, you can go to this link. There is a great uh, language reference uh, over there. And of course, also all the implementations of uh, Cucumber are uh, also there so that you can use the right software for your initiative. And with that, thanks for watching this video. Please leave me a like and don't forget to subscribe to this video because I create a video every week for you.